welcome to Combo Fango. Today we are joined by R.L. Stein. Yay! <laughs> Thanks for coming to hang out with us. I like the applause track. <laughs> yeah. Woo! Yeah. yeah, I really appreciate that. We don't have the budget to like loop in that sound yet, so I just got to do uh, it myself on the spot. So. <laughs> <laughs> you have to do everything. Yeah. Wearing many hats here. <laughs> yes. Speaking of wearing many hats, segue. <laughs> yes. You've created, you've authored so many of our, our favorite books. You know, I've got one in my hand here, my original copy, by the way. And yeah. now you're uh, yeah, into- I think it's turning yellow. <laughs> it's, it's, this is going to give that. away my age right they here. turn yellow. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> They're old. Well, this is how you can tell how old I am. Look at the color of those pages. <laughs> Uh, now you've created a horrific comic book for adults, not kids. Well, yeah, I tried. <laughs> yeah. I have. I mean, it's I, the sort of thing I would have stuck as full, a kid. Full circle for me. Yeah. When I was a kid, I never read books. People always ask, what books did you read? You, I never, I only read comic books. Okay. The freak. I loved comic books. <laughs> and um, so for me now to come around and be writing them, it's like a full circle fun thing. I love that. So you didn't read books as a kid. So why did you start out writing books and not comics? Because I couldn't draw. Okay. That's no, a good I wanted reason. to draw. I started out, I would do these in fourth grade, fifth grade, these little comic books. I had this superhero whose name was Super Stooge. <laughs> so horrible. He would fly head first into buildings. And he was like a terrible superhero. And I would draw these things and bring them to school and pass them around. This is true. And kids would say, well, Bob, your drawings suck. You can't draw. <laughs> oh, God. And, and I would look around at their drawings. They were all better than me. And I realized I couldn't draw. So I had to write. <laughs> but that's, I mean, so you kind of untapped that gift, though. So thanks to those kids for telling you you sucked. Because then you're like, well, I'm going to paint with words then. Lucky for yeah, us. Well, I had, yeah, that's what I had to do. <laughs> no, it's really true. What is it? The necessity is uh, the mother of invention, right? So it's a good thing that you're a crappy <laughs> artist, a crappy drawer. <laughs> I guess. I guess. So what was yeah, the most well, it, worked, it worked out. It did. I think it, I think out it turned okay. out okay for you. I think it worked yeah, out decently. It's all right. <laughs> so how exciting was it for you then to be able to create a comic and then not have to worry about making like, you know, crappy drawings? You get to pass it off to an artist and say like, hey, make this look great. Well, it's constantly surprising to me, really. These, you know, the art comes back and I'm always like shocked by it because it's not at all what I pictured mm -hmm. ever. I think I'm, I don't have a good visual imagination, I think. Okay. So, thank God and other people do. So how and does that process like, work? Like there's this character, you know, that introduces these stuff of Nightmare Comics, mm -hmm. the Nightmare Keeper. And I didn't picture him like that at all. I pictured him like a normal guy. And then he comes back with this mask. It's so much better than what I imagined. So do you give any notes like visually when you pass it off? Or are you just like, here's the story, go wild? I yeah, I don't like to, I don't pretend to be an art director. Okay. And you know, one of the nice things about writing comic books is you don't have to describe things. Mm -hmm. You have to, you can leave it to the artist. Okay. If, if I'm writing a book and I say, oh, he's walking through the jungle, I have to describe the trees and the vines coming down and mm -hmm. the swamp water. And But if I'm doing a comic book, I say, he's walking through the jungle. <laughs> now show us, show us the jungle. Make me a jungle. <laughs> now you take it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Popcorn over to the artist. So yeah. I, I guess it's a good thing that you did not design, design uh, the, the keeper of the nightmares because then we would have been like, this is Steve. And he's just like some guy. And he's like, hey, I'm here to tell you yeah, about this. I know. Story. Some guy <laughs> sitting at a desk with a laptop. <laughs> just got like a button up shirt and a tie. And I'm like, well, okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's thing. one direction. Oh, man. Good thing it worked out. Do you want to tell us a little bit about uh, what st Stuff of Nightmares is about? Well, it started out as my version of the Frankenstein legend. Okay. And then as I did it, I mean, we have the scientists who are working. They have actually put body parts together in the brain. They've actually done it and they've actually created life. But then as the story developed, we got a lot of, uh, you know, the island of Dr. Moreau, you know, those stories with yep. the scientist who's experimenting with animals and trying to turn them into humans. 
And so that kind of got mixed in with Frankenstein. And he, we have an uh, entire lab full of all of the scientists' failures, the mute, these horrible mutants that, that didn't work out. And, you know, they're just there. They're horrible. The, the mongrels, our little army of mongrels. Yes, right. Yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, yeah, so there's a little bit of both. And then it, it's the whole thing started changing. It was so, supposed to be about these serious scientists who wanted to change science and wanted to actually scientifically create life and show it could be done. But then their ambition gets away from them. And they have suddenly have this desire to be famous and to do something. And it, you know, ends up in their downfall, of course. Naturally. It's also kind of a cautionary tale about like going into business with family. You know, it's two brothers and it's like, mm, they have differing <laughs> opinions. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, know. <laughs> I didn't think of that. I shouldn't. I won't, I'm not going to show this to my brother. <laughs> is, is this inspired by yours and your brother's relationship what no <laughs> i was like maybe don't answer <laughs> <laughs> um this is kind of it's set up as in as an anthology style because we have the, the keeper of the nightmares that's presenting the story is it going to be an anthology series or are we no, getting just the one not that i know of there are okay. four comics that tell this story okay. the story takes up four issues okay and beyond that i don't know what's going to happen I, I'm know. just saying, I, I think you should we'll write some more. more. I think you should write I, some more. I would more. love to, but, you know, they have to ask, they have to ask me. Okay, well, let's put this in. Please yeah. ask him to write some more because this would be great <laughs> as an anthology series. Yeah, no, I try to keep busy, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you've you've got the character, though, that's already set up now to, like, present different stories. So I yeah. feel like it's it's built in. We've got the world no, now, true. so let's, let's go. Yeah. And I do love the old-fashionedness about it. I mean, that's when I was a kid, the vault of horror yes. and tales from the, those were the comics I read when I was a kid. And I kind of like going back to that. Yeah, I love that it harkens back to that old, old kind of style of that. Like that's, that's kind of my favorite thing. I'm really, I'm a sucker for anthology. So I was like, please let this be an anthology series by R.L. <laughs> Stein in comic book form. Also, it's brutal. We get like guts splattered everywhere and it's very Nasty. visceral. It's I gross. Really, I, should, I should be ashamed. <laughs> on twitter i keep saying please keep the kids away <laughs> please <laughs> i don't want my 10 year olds 10 year olds audience <laughs> reading this but of course they will won't they? of course that's what i would have done when i was 10 maybe they wouldn't have it at the scholastic book fair so i'd have to find it at a comic book shop and, and then my mom would be like what is me. that yeah. <laughs> believe me they will not find it at the book fair no it's not gonna be at the book fair <laughs> <laughs> no I'm just imagining some some like school accidentally orders it thinking like oh yeah that's great and being like oh, oh yeah, it's a poor librarian time. like oh my god <laughs> <laughs> yeah, horrible <laughs> what is that that's there's a, guts that's, that's a nightmare of mine yeah <laughs> that's a real nightmare but that's kind of a cool thing about your work is it's like um you're like the horror version of those like level books. It's like, okay, in elementary school, we're going to start you off with goosebumps. And then maybe junior high in high school, you're going to go fear street. And then now you've got stuff of nightmares. So it's like you graduate yeah. through the levels of horror. Oh, true. They all go to Stephen King. The <laughs> magazine, this is true. A magazine once called me a training bra for Stephen King. Oh, <laughs> Yes, it's true. And the one time I met him, I met him at an Edgar Award ceremony. I'd never met him in 30 years. And I said, Steve, did you know a magazine once called me a, lit a training bra for you? And he, he said, yes, I know. <laughs> okay. That's terrible, right? You don't want to call the train. No, I feel like there's like wait, there's much cooler ways to say that, but I'm like, I don't know. Were yeah. you were you pleased with that? I don't. No, no, I wasn't. <laughs> Why am I repeating it? <laughs> You're like, in case you haven't heard this quote, let me tell you guys as well. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's actually going to be the headline for 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 this interview. Yeah, great, great. <laughs> you did it to yourself. I mean, it's too it's too good. Yeah, to horrible, terrible, terrible habit. <laughs> Well, you didn't grow up reading, so do you read Stephen King like as an adult? Do you read books now? I no, I read. I read mostly mysteries and thrillers. Okay. <laughs> don't tell. Don't. No one's listening, right? No, it's I, just just I'm you not, and me here. Not, yeah, I'm not really into horror. 
What? <laughs> <laughs> but don't tell anyone. Okay. I read, I read you know, I, I like old British mysteries and I, I read all the, th I'm in this uh, ITW, this organization, uh, International Thriller Writers. Okay. So I know Michael Connolly and Harlan Coben and Lee Child and I hang out with them every year. Okay. And those are, they're the guys, I, I, I read mostly thrillers. And a lot adventures of people, into horror. Of it, it, it overlaps the, like the Venn diagram of thriller and horror. We get a little bit of an overlap there. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> okay. So you're not really into horror. Do you watch horror movies? Like you have, what do you, you watch? The I'm always stuff. looking for a clever one. I'm always looking for something witty. Mm, you know? Okay. Please go watch Wait. Barbarian. You might enjoy that one. Barbarians? Yes. Barbarian. Yeah, no S. There's two separate yeah, movies. That, one. <laughs> that one's new. I think maybe you might enjoy that. And it would, if you went to see it, it would just make my day because I'd be like, oh, you took my recommendation. You watched Barbarian. <laughs> no, I'll check it out. Okay. Check it out. I watched Prey last week. Oh, did you enjoy that one? Well, I enjoyed it, but it's not, it doesn't really have a story. It's just a battle. <laughs> the whole movie is just a battle. They fight <laughs> and that's, and then it's over. That is a story. She saves the tribe. Yeah, that's it. There's battle and save no the tribe. Plot. There's no twists or anything they just <laughs> fight this thing that's all you need sometimes you know i'm like all right i just need to see you save the tribe and just like yeah. battle it out with this with this alien predator and i'm good right right <laughs> just to watch, watch you kick ass for 90 minutes i'm here right. For it. that's it very satisfying <laughs> yeah well tell me your top three horror movies then if you had to pick oh i no, come on no. I, well i'm talking Frankenstein. about my, my, well, I love those, all okay. the universal um, horror. I was talking about this 1933 horror film, Island of Lost Souls. Um, it's uh, Charles Lawton plays Dr. Moreau on this island, and Bella Lugosi is in it. And it's, I took a lot in Stuff of Nightmares from this old horror movie, because he's trying to turn animals into humans. And he has failure after failure. And he's got all these twisted, horrible creatures that he's created, his failures. And when this film, Island of Lost Souls, when the film came out in 1933, audiences threw up in their seats. <laughs> they were so upset by it that, <laughs> that people threw up in the movie theater. I would just love to be at a screening one day where something like that happens. Or like if I had no. a time machine, go back in time for something yeah. like that, where it's like, this is the first time I, anyone has seen anything like this and they're throwing up in their seats. <laughs> I know. It doesn't happen anymore. No. People are used to it. Everything. Yes. I'm like, everyone has seen anyway. everything. You're desensitized. I need you to yeah. throw up in the seats and I want to be there for it. <laughs> right. That's, that's my favorite horror movie. Okay. That's a good one. That's but there are other movie. more recent ones. The first orphan film. Mm hmm do you know that? I yes. think it's really tense, horrifying film. Yeah. <laughs> Something and about I creepy love, kids. Even I though... love Cabin in the Woods. Oh, Cabin in the Woods is fantastic. You film. say you don't like horror, but you're like naming like bangers. I'm like, you do no. watch horror. <laughs> <laughs> well, but see, that starts out, you think you know what it is with mm -hmm. these teenagers and the cat, and it turns out to be something completely different. Yes. That's what I love. I love those kind of twists. Yes. And it's something you would never guess, too. Even if someone was like, it's not what you think it is. There's twists. You would never be able to guess those twists because it goes so in another direction where you're like, That's what right. is a possibility? I know. I love, I love being manipulated. <laughs> I'm just kidding. These are the pool quotes from it's Training Raw yeah. for Stephen King. I love yeah, being right. manipulated. Right. This is gold. This is gold here. All right. <laughs> Thank you. I know we're running out of time, but I just want to close also by just saying like, Thank you. I, I mean, I grew up on your work. I was the kid laying on my bedroom floor, reading yeah. Goosebumps and then like writing my own stories. And then I grew up to do like nice. a weird, a weird spooky job. So thank you. <laughs> nice. Glad to have been a bad influence. <laughs> yeah. You have been yes, the right. worst influence. And I thank you yes, so thank much you. from the thank bottom you. of my little black heart. <laughs> <laughs> this has been so much fun. I love talking to you. Oh, please. It, you are welcome to come hang out anytime, please. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We'll All talk, right. we'll, let's talk. We'll talk on Tuesday. Okay, let's do it. We're going to have a weekly, weekly chats. <laughs> yeah, nice. nice. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Stuff of Nightmares number one is available at comic book shops. There's also going to be digital versions available, right? Comicsology and such. Yes. It's disgusting. There's guts. 
there's intestines. It's lovely. So thank you so much. Yeah.